Yeah, hi folks. Now what's going on in Ukraine at the moment is truly despicable, but it was foreseeable. Tyrants like Vladimir Putin and Xi Jinping prey on weakness, and the West couldn't be any weaker than what it is today. Now because of countries like Germany who have become dependent on uh, Russian oil and gas and Biden has destroyed America's energy independence through the Green New Deal, the West is, has become very weak indeed. But let's not forget the uh, corporates who have sold us all out to communist China as well. And there's something else going on here as well, folks. That when you brought the Young Global Leaders Program here for executive education and then the Schwab Fellows. But there are two countries in the world now in which the Young Global Leaders have emerged. Tell us just a bit about that in, in terms of the governance. Yes, um, actually, this um, notion to integrate young leaders uh, <coughs> is part of the World Economic Forum since many years. And I have to say, um, when I mention our names, like Mrs. Merkel, um, even um, Vladimir Putin. Vladimir Putin. And so on. They all have been young global leaders of the World Economic Forum. Mm -hmm. But um, what we are very proud of now is a young generation like uh, Prime Minister Trudeau. There you go, folks. Trudeau was a young global leader just like Putin. Um, president of, Brazil, of uh, Argentina and so on, so that we penetrate the cabinets. So yesterday I was at a, rece at a reception for Prime Minister Trudeau, and I would know that half of this cabinet, or even more half of uh, half of this cabinet, are for our actually young global leaders of the world. Wow. So half of Trudeau's cabinet are global communists, just like Adern. There's this debate going on right now, raging over whether you can be both patriotic and a global citizen. You know, I always, of course, view these issues through the lens of a New Zealander. And we are immensely proud of who and what we are as a nation, but some of that pride derives from what we've done on the international stage, the first country in the world to give women the vote, uh, our stance on being nuclear free, our role in history creating a great cradle to grave welfare system. Yeah, what she means is cradle to grave government dependency, government control. So yes, I believe that you can be both proud of who you are and where you're from, but some of that pride can be come from what you do as an international citizen. Now let's see some similarities between these two young global communists. And RT is Russian media, so Putin is watching this wokeness, or should I say weakness? Canadian Prime Minister's choice of clothing on his eight-day trip to India has been ridiculed online, with some accusing Justin Trudeau of playing fancy dress. Justin Trudeau's Eat, Pray, Love, Spirit Quest routine reminds me of the spring break yogi travelers I went to school with, who came back from the Far East with an accent and a new wardrobe every year. Is it just me or this choreographed cuteness all just a bit too much now? Also, FYI, we Indians don't dress like this every day, sir. Not even in Bollywood. Stop with the prayer hands. It just looks like you're out of ideas.
obviously we take the situation extremely seriously. The individual in question should never have received an invitation. And as soon as we found out, we rescinded the invitation immediately. Let's have a look at some of the footage from Canada where what has happened now, Justin Trudeau, and I'll be talking about this more in a minute, Justin Trudeau has declared an emergency act, the, the strongest and most repressive tool in his government to try and silence and starve these people, to stop them getting their hands on their own money, to stop them getting uh, petrol, to stop them getting food. It's insane what Trudeau is doing. Just have a look at now that the troops have moved in on these people. Yeah, really any different to Putin? Tina Tato Kato, good evening. Thousands of anti-mandate protesters marched across the Auckland Harbour Bridge today, closing parts of the motorway for two hours. Traffic into the city was brought to a standstill, and even though the group did not have permission, police let them do it anyway. Edward O'Driscoll was there. They marched in their thousands. A parade of protesters bringing Auckland Harbour Bridge to a crawl. Their message was clear. The usual hum of traffic drowned out by the crowd. Police had been trying to stop the group from unlawfully walking on the motorway, but officers were clearly outnumbered. And they stop! They stop march! Instead, they helped safely escort protesters onto the bridge, including families and children. The bridge was closed to all southbound traffic. The group determined to make their voices heard. The government won't listen to us at all. We all want our freedom back. Passers-by honks in support. Some with boats turned out on the harbour as well. This is a sight you don't see every day. We're walking with hundreds and hundreds of protesters across the Auckland Harbour Bridge. The mood here is peaceful, and all of these people are united in their message. You can't force things upon people that they don't want. This is a free country. Why have you come out? Just, just to support everybody who believes in whatever they think about. For almost two hours, the main route into the city was completely cut off. Traffic was backed up, motorists forced to rethink their plans. City centre has been severely hit by the pandemic and now by Omicron, so anything that impacts access is very concerning actually for our businesses. The march was one of six organised across the country by the Freedoms and Rights Coalition. Occupiers in Wellington clashed with police again today. But there was also celebration. This couple exchanging vows this afternoon on the lawns of Parliament. The groom told the crowd they're both unvaccinated, so couldn't get married in a registry office. Further south, protesters gathered in Christchurch, where over a thousand unmasked people marched through the CBD, finishing at the Bridge of Remembrance. Yeah, and according to Adern, those huge crowds of thousands and thousands of people don't represent New Zealand. And here they are indoctrinating young school kids in London. Who, who believes in equality? Who believes in equality? You are all feminists. Wow, I must be a feminist as well. Because that, for me, it is, that is at its most simple. That is what femi feminism is. It's just that simple idea of fairness. Now, lots of stereotypes hang off that word. Lots of them. We were talking about them some of, before, and all of you 
had such good insights into all of the stereotypes that hang off that one word. And that comes with a word that has so much history, waves of history, different movements at different times. But if you drill it all back down, and if you just simplify it, feminism is about fairness. No, it's not. It's about hating men. And equality. And one of the things that I've realized and I've talked about a lot is um, making sure that I raise my daughter to understand that she can do absolutely anything, that there should be no barriers, uh, that she should have all the opportunities in the world. But uh, my wife, who, Sophie, who's actually one of my role models and inspirations as a woman, a woman there's no question about it, um, pointed out to me that it's great that you're raising your daughter uh, to be uh, a feminist and to think about gender equality and know that she can do anything, but you've got to raise your sons as well to be feminists. Now, what does Putin think when he hears that? Justin Trudeau has become the first sitting Canadian Prime Minister to join a gay parade. I've been coming to this for years, and uh, uh, it's, it's sort of frustrating that it has to be a big thing. It shouldn't be a big thing that the Prime Minister's walking in Pride Parade, and from now on it won't. And Adern does exactly the same. Jacinda, does it feel momentous that you are the first Prime Minister to walk in a Pride Parade? Yeah, now pretty much all Western leaders are doing this, and Putin and Xi Jinping see this wokeness as weakness, which in part leads to this. The reality on the ground, uh, there was no peace here in several of the major cities around Ukraine. The violence resume, resumed and the ferocity of the Russians just astonishing. Huge explosions have again rocked Kiev, a Russian airstrike taking out a radar facility, the Kremlin warning civilians to leave the city. And in Ukraine's second largest city, Kharkiv, the shocking sight of cluster bombs raining down on residential neighborhoods. Dozens of civilians are thought to have been killed, hundreds injured. A shopping centre targeted, the use of such indiscriminate weapons may well constitute a war crime. Yeah, but don't worry folks, Jacinda will save us. Comes in, comes again. 